The ACN, AN, Turing Award is often referred to as the Nobel Prize of Computing. The winner of Turing Award in 2021 is Dr. Jack Dongora. If you are in the HPC community, you may heard his name somewhere in all kinds of recent conferences. In this video, we try to go through several presentations of Dr. Jack Dongra in different conferences and learn the big ideas about the HPC from the Turing Award winner. We also try to share some personal opinions about the crucial ideas presented in those uh, presentations. Basically, we use three materials in this video. The first one is uh, this one. It is presented in 20, July of uh, 2022 in this uh, PARC22 High Performance Computing, where we are today and look into the future. The second material is this one, Twin Award winner Jack Dongra, how the integration of high performance computing and AI revolutionized the scientific computing. And it is presented in the 10th uh, National Social Media Processing Conference. I think it's uh, September 1st, around sometime in September. Uh, and uh, uh, next one is uh, uh, SC22. Supercomputing 22, which is a recent one. It is presented in November 16th. And uh, the title is Jack Dongra, a not so simple matter of software. You can find the whole presentation here in the by this YouTube link, which is a really, uh, really great and provides some really useful and interesting information. And by reviewing those three slides, we try to guide you to some useful information and related materials. And in summary, we will discuss our ideas from several uh, aspects. First one is the top 500 list. And the second one is about the ECP projects, discussion about the ECP project. And the next one is a view between the software and hardware. And the last one is a post ECP projects. What are new trend and what are some future ideas in this uh, HPC community? The first topic is the top 500 list. This is a topic that Dr. Jack Dungwa discussed every time in his presentation. You may see this figure here and there during his presentation and this is a top five, top 10 system in June 2022, and this might be updated in future. The important thing is those metrics here. We can find all kinds of detailed description here. Two important ones are our max, which represents the maximum impact performance achieved, and the RPIC, which represents the theoretical peak performance. If you, if you look at this figure, Oh, here they describe this top 500 list. You can see all kinds of machines. And if you look at this figure, we can see the percentage of peak, which means that uh, how much performance the actual, I mean, the actual cluster can achieve. And it is uh, interesting to understand different benchmark behind this. The typical one is uh, they call that uh, HPL benchmark, which represents high performance impact benchmark. The more recent one is this, the high performance conjugate gradient benchmark, which is uh, complementary for the traditional one. There are de detailed description here for the traditional benchmark. Basically, it uh, try to solve a matrix multiplication problem, but the matrix is a dense form and it is started since 1993. For HPCG benchmark, yeah, here it is. It solves a, also a matrix multiplication, but the matrix is in a large sparse form, which might be represents more actual applications. The results are interesting, which means that machine have a top performance doesn't 
may not have a good performance for HPCG. So there are different benchmarks. And if you look at the figure here, the green line represents the uh, existing HPL performance and the green line represents the HPCG performance. There is a huge gap here, which means even though they have uh, machines that have a uh, really good performance in particular for problem, but for actual problem, it might be a different one. We might not achieve that good performance. And another interesting thing is this IO500 list, which contains more versatile IO system. But in my opinion, those uh, storage vendor are also are only the particular vendor that pro provides those storage system. It is better to show that the cluster name, for example, which cluster use those perform those use particular IO system, and what are a performance, such as the results here, maybe a system, what a IO performance. And by this way, we can have a better picture about the cluster that both contains the performance metric metrics for the uh, computation and communication performance. Actually, it is a little bit interesting uh, to discuss the different top 500 or 100 or top 10 list it is a kind of like a game in the HPC domain and people always talk about them during the meeting and during their discussion and we everyone knows that the performance that machine with a higher performance in particular benchmark is might not have a I mean first position position in another benchmark but we like to discuss about them and what are the number of HPC in type top 500 list in different countries, etc. And what are the future goals for, for the, uh, those clusters and how this change in future. The next topic we want to discuss is about the ECP project, which represents the Xscale computing project. Although I heard the name of ECP project here and there, but I feel that the material that make me really understand the ECP project is this slide from Dr. Jack Dongora's presentation. You may find all kinds of detailed information about the ECP project on their official website, but I think most people may not have enough patience and time to go through all of those details here. I really like these slides and I think it is elegant, informative, comprehensive, and really insightful. It provides a whole picture of the ECP project. For these slides, it provides a roadmap to that X-scale system computing, and what are some history and perspective of different machine in different year. And in these slides, it provides more details about the ECP project. The good thing is that this slides from inf provides information for people from different domain and especially for audience from different domain. If you are a hardware person, you might interested in those machines, Frontier and Aura and this one and what are, how much they cost and you might dive into more details to search related information. And if you are from a, a software perspective and have a software background, you might be interested in those softwares and the legend in different uh, aspects. If you are a domain scientist, you might be interested to look at different scientific problems here and how the ECP project can support those scientific domains and to solve those problems. For example, for myself, I might be more interested in the software aspect and I could zoom into this part and to look at those different particular aspect. I may look at how those projects are grouped together and what are benefits and drawbacks for particular software listed in the same legend here and consider why they divide those softwares by this way and what are the position for the project that I'm working on and what are future opportunities for research and funding, etc. 
I think maybe I could take several minutes to stare at this figure and consider all kinds of questions. Anyway, I think this slide is really good and we can try to learn the concept to organize the materials according to this one, I mean, based on this template. Okay, let's look at another interesting topic, which is the relationship between the software and hardware. I really like this description. Uh, we are in sort of catch-up mode all the time, I feel, side Dongra. The architecture changes and the algorithm and software try to catch up with, the, with that architecture. I have this image of the Harvard people throwing something over the fence and the algorithm people and software guys scrambling to figure out how to fit their problems on that machine to effectively deal with it. It takes about 10 years to do that, then a new machine. Let's look at this uh, figure and here uh, there is a list about different architecture, I mean, from the architecture's perspective, new capabilities and left side are different um, a milestone of the particular software, how the software can utilize those new architecture. One new thing for the architecture is the float pointing point representation, which is a recent one new architecture. So in that, this slide, Dr. Jack Dongra described it a lot and why we use a mixed precision and here are all kinds of reasons. If you, are, if you work on the uh, matrix multiplication of some AI benchmark, you must have a real, really good understanding about those details and there are a bunch of papers recently that utilize this circuit, I mean, use this property to improve the uh, in speed of the problem solving and there are all kinds of this here. So that is uh, the relationship between the software and hardware from the Dr. Jack Dongra's presentation. And the important thing is, I mean, if we look at the future, remember there is another figure here, I think this one, about the architecture in the HPC world in future, it will be highly uh, customized, different accelerators. The last one is to look at the future and what is the future after the ECP project and uh, how the, how professor, uh, how Dr. Jack Dongra look at the future. One thing is that the simulation and AI workflow, how to combine those things together. In this presentation, he described his view about this. Simulation data can be the input of the analytic or learning system, and the learning system can use the trained model to improve the simulation. And if you look at those more details, how to connect in HPC and AI can be used to steer the simulation. Machine learning can help customize computation kernels and turning the op op application parameters, etc. In the future, if you can combine your traditional workflow, a simulation workflow with the HPC and AI, and using the using the AI method, you can definitely get uh, more success. And in his takeaway page, you can see that uh, hardware is constantly changing, and different properties and three computer revolutions. Deep learning is definitely one, and of course, we have lots of room to improve. So I think this slide can provide a really good picture about what his thoughts about those views and what are future, future trend. We always need to look at a new architecture, I mean here, new method, and here, and new data. New data is for a uh, domain science, I mean, the domain science from different data. That is uh, why how we can always improve the, I mean, how we discover new research opportunities. So if he uses slides a lot in different place, different presentation, if you look at uh, this one, I think we can also find that slides. 
but here they provide he provide more details about the data scale system ma matrix and uh, yeah still this one if you are interested about those details you may look at this paper in more details that's all for this video and hope it can provide you some useful information see you next time